Welcome to working on a large Stuart model steam plant and this is part 4. Making the gaskets and putting the pump back together followed by a quick test run. The inlet valves on the lower layer are all ground in and working fine I hope. So I'm going to use this tool to cut out the large holes to accommodate the inlet valves in the bottom block. And frankly this was a set of tools I bought a couple of years ago and they're absolutely rubbish. The main problem is that they are not sharp and never have been. I'm having to hit this punch far too hard to cut a hole and even then I have to do it twice. And look at the raggy finish. This is a really simple tool to make yourself and I think I'm going to take all the ones I have out of the drawer and just sharpen them, put them in the lathe and turn the ends. The tool isn't blunt because of overuse, it's the first time I've ever used it. So now, to finish off the job, I'm using a sanding drum in my small Proxon motor tool. Then I'll clean off each side of the gasket before fitting it to make sure that there are no bits and pieces left in the valve chest. The next part of the job is equally simple, using a standard hole punch. And this is a very cheap tool, but it's really good and it's worked very well since I first bought it. And with this hole punch, I'm punching out the rest of the holes. The holes for the studs, and then the four transfer holes from the cylinders to this valve chest. A viewer wrote in to correct me and tell me that these valves are not inlet valves, they are outlet valves. Well, I'm sorry, you're wrong. No, they're not. They're exactly the same as the output valves, but in this case, they function as inlet valves. So with the main block sitting on top of the inlet valves, I'm now going to work on the outlet valves in exactly the same way. And as before, with the inlet valves, I'm using a mixture of fine grinding paste and tea cut on these, which are the main outlet valves. If you're not sure how these pumps work, I may do a video explaining it, but it is fairly self-explanatory. Please go back and watch the video, the previous video also. Or better than that, why not contact Blackgates Engineering and buy the drawing? That will tell you how it works. One of my regular, long-standing Patreon supporters said that he fancied building one of these pumps and asked me which was the best one to build. The gunmetal one or the cast iron one? And my answer to that every time is build the gunmetal one because it won't rust away. A while back I rebuilt a full-size steam pump and it was a great thing. It really ran well in the end. The important parts of this full-size pump were made from phosphor bronze but the rest of it was cast iron and the cast iron part was very rusty whereas the phosphor bronze parts were fine. In this clip I'm fitting the main water outlet union and the reason for the T-piece is because one side of it goes to a bypass valve. And now it's gasket time once again. I'm making the top gasket, same principle, press the part first onto an ink pad and then onto the gasket material and then cut it out. Don't forget to remove the ink before fitting the gasket. I cut out the centre of this gasket using my craft knife and then I cleaned it up with the little drum sander in the Proxon motor tool like before. Usually I will leave the outer dimension of the gaskets a bit larger than they need to be because it's quite an easy job to cut it off and then I clean the edge using some Scotch-Brite. A viewer suggested that I use a felt tip pen on the edge of gaskets and that's a good idea. I do that sometimes but I didn't bother this time. Don't forget I've already been here before and this pump started to leak so I'm not really that hopeful that it's going to be perfect this time although there is one vital difference between the assembly previously and the assembly now. Can you spot what the deliberate mistake was the first time round? Well it wasn't a deliberate mistake, I just duplicated the way the pump was in the first place. Here's a good tip, I'm using a stainless steel ball and a union nut to block up one of the outlets from the T-piece. And now it's time to test the pump with a piece of silicone rubber tubing attached to the output and the input and connecting the compressed air line it immediately bursts into life. A good sign is it didn't need priming, the pump sucked the water into the tube and now it's happily pumping it out of the other pipe. When I squeeze this other pipe to restrict the flow there's quite a lot of pressure there. The adjustment of the timing of the pump isn't perfect, I'm going to look into that in the next episode. As you can see from this clip everything appears to be fine. This pump is double acting so the piston not only draws in new water it simultaneously pushes out the water from the previous load and as this is a duplex pump you multiply that by two because there are two water cylinders both double acting. I'm going to have a bit of a fiddle with the timing because it's really not good at all and I have a sneaking feeling I know why. 
But I'll leave that as a cliffhanger too for the next episode. It's quite difficult to get the timing right on these engines. They don't have eccentrics for the valves that you can advance or retard. The valves are just moved every time the middle part of these arms hits the washer, which in turn is held in place by the two lock nuts. From what I can tell, I don't think that the valve events in the valve chest are 100%, so I'm going to look into this in the next episode. For now though, it's really not important. I can get it to run well enough by making adjustments as you've seen me do. A bit of oil is probably a good idea as well. This is nothing special, just my normal Hallett Oils lubricating oil, a very good quality lubricant. By adjusting these small lock nuts, I can make the pump run quite well. And of course the piston travel is now going full length at each end of the stroke. And that's it for now, you'll have to wait until the next exciting instalment to find out why I can't get this pump to run evenly. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.